Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. This is a BAM Credit Insights video, and I'm here with Les Richmond, BAM's Vice President and Pension Actuary. Les is the author of the new white paper, COVID-19 and Public Pensions, How Today's Policy Choices Can Drive Long-Term Risks. We're going to talk about the origins of that paper and some of the ways it can be used by municipal bond analysts in uh, this Credit Insights video. So let's, let's take a step back. We're almost one year, just a little over one year into the pandemic here in the U.S. Last spring, there was a lot of talk about public pension risk after the stock market sold off and analysts were concerned about pension fund assets. We all know what happened next, uh, several rounds of stimulus into the economy, a massive stock market rally, and there's a lot less talk about pension risk in the public sector today. Uh, but your message in this white paper is that pension risk has to remain on the radar screens for municipal bond analysts. So why don't you take us through your thought process? Why is it still so important? Well, uh, yes, it's been uh, quite a year of upheaval in so many ways. Uh, and uh, in terms of pension risk, back when the markets were tanking uh, a, a year ago, uh, the big concern was uh, kind of things that were out of the uh, bond issuer's control, uh, namely the performance of the financial markets and how that would manifest itself in higher pension contributions and budgetary stress. So that was the big concern to start off with out of the issuer's control. And over time, uh, with the bounce back of the market, uh, that, that concern has faded. And um, now uh, there's been a transition to um, a, a situation where items that are within bond issuer's control are going to be key to what happens in terms of pension risk uh, going forward. And so, um, I started uh, back in the middle of uh, 2020, uh, the National League of Cities issued uh, uh, their uh, annual fiscal condition survey. Uh, and uh, they included in it a projection uh, from a survey that, um, that there would be a 13% or so decline in revenue on account of the pandemic. And that is just about the same kind of decline that took place with respect to the Great Recession in 08 and 09. So I started thinking about things that actually happened after the Great Recession in 08 and 09, how those items were within issuer's control and how that sort of would play out in terms of uh, pension risk going forward. And so that was really the origin of the paper. So this is not just hypothetical. You, you went back and, you know, although we haven't had a pandemic before, we've had similar economic situations and you could take a look at how those uh, were expressed uh, by issuers. Correct. Great. Correct. So, you know, let me just take a step back. We've talked about pension and risk as a concept, but, you know, maybe could you put some more meat around that, define it uh, from BAM's perspective, particularly remembering that, uh, you know, as a bond insurer, we're on, uh, on risk for the entire life of a transaction we can't train out of a position. So how do we uh, approach, uh, approach pension risk as we're analyzing uh, credits? The definition of pension risk when it comes to how we think about it at BAM is uh, how events and decisions will have an impact on pension and OPEB, other post-employment benefit costs in the future. And can those decisions or events actually manifest themselves in such a way as to increase costs to such a level that it could impair an issuer's ability to pay their debts, which of course we at BAM are very, very uh, concerned about. So when I was thinking about uh, all of the possible events and decisions that could happen in the wake of the pandemic, that's the way I thought of them. I thought of them in terms of, could they increase that risk of potential budgetary pressure in the future um, and, and impair the ability to pay debts? And without going through the entire list, uh, and, and we encourage everybody watching to uh, look at the full uh, white paper, let me just take one as an example. You talk about payroll adjustments and, and, and workforce uh, adjustments. Um, and your conclusion there is that you can't draw a, 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 an immediate conclusion whether that's going to increase or decrease risk, because that's something that has to be observed over a long period of time. Maybe you could just talk about why, uh, why that's not something that's easy to, to, uh, to pin one way or the other. Well, when it comes to um, workforce adjustments, uh, those are tools that are used generally to decrease payroll, which is uh, something that issuers are sometimes interested in doing uh, when they have a budget gap to plug, okay? So there are different ways to do that. Um, we talk about it in the paper. There's, of course, there's layoffs. There's 
uh, pay freezes, and there are uh, early retirement programs. And those things are so individually, uh, uh, you know, subject to individual circumstances and the way things play out over time that you can't just make a snap decision today that this is going to increase or decrease pension risks. So for example, uh, you know, you look at uh, potential layoffs, okay, which is something that you, we've seen a lot already during, uh, during the pandemic. You don't know what the demographics of the laid off group is and how that, that transition from active employee to not active employee or retiree is gonna impact uh, pension liabilities. You, know, you could have a bunch of people that are retirement eligible. They all are laid off. All of a sudden, you have lower payroll, but you do have these potentially increased pension costs. So you just have to see the individual facts and circumstances of the decision that uh, that employer makes. I think we're going back to uh, our friend uh, BAM's chief credit officer, Suzanne Finnegan, often says, uh, when you've seen one municipal bond, you've seen one municipal bond. That is true. Um, that is so true. Yeah, the, 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 the diversity inside our, our industry and our market is, is uh, massive and it helps uh, have somebody like you who's, who's looking at hundreds of pension plans every year, so you really can get uh, comparisons from, from place to place. Um, one last thing I just want to mention. Um, so in addition to uh, speaking to the market and helping analysts understand these things, uh, you also wrote a, a article this week for the National League of Cities, Cities Speak blog, um, speaking back to the public sector and BAM's members encouraging uh, policymakers there to think about these decisions as they go forward in this year's uh, uh, budget process. So that's something that uh, BAM is doing as a service to its members as well. Um, so Glad thank you, you uh, for your time here, Les, and uh, encourage everybody to read the white paper. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, Mike. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM-insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption. So while America rebuilds, BAM has you covered. BAM. Build America Mutual. Talk to your investment advisor or visit buildamerica.com.